We've seen the history of the Warzone meta, so let's take a look at the most broken guns along the way. These are the guns the devs messed up on. The guns that acted in a way that was not intended. Some of these guns only being available for mere days. With that in mind, you're not going to see things like the DMR or the Interceptor or like just like really meta defining guns. Although they were very broken, they weren't necessarily game breaking. Also, some of these guns didn't even make it to my history of the Warzone meta video because of how unorthodox they were. So welcome to the entire history of broken guns in Warzone. Right at launch, we had the snake shots, which we've talked about way too much on this channel, so I won't spend too much time here. You know the drill, they've been meta in every iteration of Warzone at some point or another. They always find a way to mess up the snake shot ammo to just be insane with the damage range. Somehow ends up always being better than any shotgun in the game, which is just wild. Add the fact that they're semi-automatic, akimbo, and have wild hip fire accuracy, and you've got one of the most broken guns we've ever seen in Warzone. Now, a season or two later comes a couple of patches, which always brings a handful of nerfs and buffs. One of which was the FAMAS, which was pretty much useless in Warzone up until this point. They decided to buff the damage range, amongst some other things. But, however, within this buff, somehow the underbarrel shotgun, specifically for the FAMAS, got caught in the crossfire, no pun intended, and resulted in one of the craziest exploits we've ever seen in Warzone history. The attachment was a one-shot kill at a pretty considerable distance, which no other shotgun was capable at this point. If your first shot didn't down them, it really didn't even matter because the fire rate and the hip fire accuracy was also really good on this but i would say the craziest thing about this is that it didn't even take up a weapon slot since it was an attachment so you still had a fully functioning famas for your mid-range engagements which wasn't anything crazy but was still pretty dang good then you had probably the car 98 as your secondary and you were covered at all ranges this was one of those things that did not last long at all and was a complete mistake that slipped through the cracks and probably resulted in somebody getting fired New season means new guns, and in season 6, we got the AS Val, which was a fun concept, kind of like an AR-SMG hybrid type, but with that also brought a 10-round magazine that buffed the bullet penetration. To infinity. Now with the FAMAS underbarrel shotgun, I kind of understand how that one makes it to life since it's kind of like an unorthodox attachment that nobody really uses so like, you know, maybe they just don't test it and it was also a bug like it wasn't intended to happen so like, you know, people aren't really going to be looking for that. But with this, I absolutely have no idea how it made it to live. How did it even make it to live servers? How? When an attachment specifically says that it increases the bullet penetration, does that mean you should probably monitor by how much? I'm almost convinced this gun also like got stronger the more walls you were shooting through. I'm not even joking. There were also some absolute sick troglodytes who would run this with an M4 underbarrel like snapshot grenade launcher, which I didn't even know existed until this point. And if you shot this underbarrel outside a building, it would ping everybody inside and then you just switch to the AS Val and laced every single person with ease. You were seriously never safe no matter what. What I liked about how they handle the nerf was they got rid of the bullet penetration buff that still made it a really viable gun which is always fun to see because it ended up being like a pretty fun gun to use after this nerf also a quick side note while this gun existed during multiplayer it was actually unplayable seriously felt like you were in a hacked lobby because you would just get laced through walls every time you respawn especially if you were playing shipment seriously just a wild time to be playing the game <laughs> Crazy thing about the SPR is that it also launched with Season 6, alongside the AS Val. That means everything I'm about to mention coexisted with everything I just talked about with the AS Val. Everyone loves a new sniper, so when the SPR dropped, everyone was pretty hyped. One shots to the head and has pretty quick mobility, which was looking to compete with the Car 98, which everybody already loved. Well, let me tell you, this was a Car 98 murderer. This had all the perks of the Car 98, but the only difference was the damn thing was hit scan. For those that don't know what hit scan is, it's when the bullet of the gun is a laser and essentially doesn't really exist in real time teleports across the entire map immediately which means no bullet drop and no bullet time so when a gun's velocity is infinite and also one shots to the head it causes a lot of imbalance and also rewards a lot of people who have no idea how to snipe i mean seriously hitting 300 plus meter snipes was just like a breeze the game honestly kind of turned into csgo for there for a minute since it was just like all you had to do was aim for the head no matter like how far away they were which was just really 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 broken and annoying i don't hate the idea of a hit scan sniper but just make it not one shot kind of like warzone 2 that was the whole thing with warzone 2 they were really easy to use they just wouldn't one shot but whatever and looking back at it this may have been the most unstable state of the game when you think of this existing simultaneously with the as val there's also a theory that they purposely make the new guns bugged and broken so it like drives up the battle pass sales but i don't know but season six you're looking really sus <laughs> 
Now, at this point, it's been about a year and some change since we've had anything game-breaking Warzone at this time, aside from the DMR, of course. But this blissful period would come to an end once the Akimbo Double Barrel Shotguns would make an appearance in Warzone. These were pretty much the same as the Snake Shots, but the only difference is that they only hold two shots in each shotgun. They hit just as hard, if not harder, and were being completely abused since this is at the height of the Rebirth craze. And obviously, we know Rebirth is a very close quarters map, so this is just what everybody was running, and it was just kind of like... Who would get the first shot off? That's all it was. Not even about aim, really. You think only having two rounds would make it at least a little better if you were on the receiving end, but that didn't even matter since it took like two seconds to reload. Also, if there was an award for the ugliest looking gun on this list, this would for sure take the cake. I mean, I get that the scope helped with the range, but seriously, like, what the hell is this? For the remainder of Warzone 1's life cycle, there wouldn't be anything too game-breaking other than like all the ridiculous Vanguard guns being very easy to use. Which brings us to the launch of Warzone 2 where the Akimbo P890s were like the best close range option in the entire game. If you haven't noticed by now, there's kind of a trend here with Akimbo and brokenness. I'm not sure how, but they can never get the Akimbo attachment right. In this instance, I'm pretty sure it was bugged to double the damage, but the, I mean like double the damage per gun, so in theory it was quadrupling the damage in total. This resulted in you being able to one shot anyone who was fully plated as long as you hit bull shots in the head which mind you that wasn't even possible for snipers at this point in the game which was crazy but even if you didn't hit a headshot it still only took two shots which was just like super broken with a crazy rate of fire and also like insane hip fire accuracy this was ruining end games left and right the amount of people who would run riot shield and just rush your building with confidence because all they had to do is just spam left and right trigger was so stupid thank goodness resurgence wasn't in the game yet because this would have been extremely annoying Remember when I said at the launch of Warzone 2 there wasn't a sniper that could one-shot? Well, that was actually kind of a lie. The new Victus XMR at the time had a bug where if you put the explosive ammo, it could one-shot. Now, I don't really consider this broken at all, but I thought it was worth mentioning since technically it wasn't functioning how the developers wanted it to. Like, they were super duper anti-one-shot headshots. We can also sprinkle in the fact that a few months later, the incendiary ammo would also get bugged into allowing a one-shot with certain snipers, which again, I don't think is broken whatsoever, but definitely not what they had in mind. Also, for fun, let's go ahead and mention the St. Patrick's Day sniper. This was not a bug. This was fully intended. They added this for like a limited time mode, but this sniper one shot no matter where you hit them head foot torso It would one shot down no matter what after all these bugs like towards the end of Warzone 2 They finally decided to make explosive ammo one shot with as long as it was a bolt-action sniper rifle Warzone 2 sniping was an absolute mess <laughs> Not much to say here other than the snake shot ammo got bugged. I'm not really sure how this got brought back into the game. The only thing that was like extra sucky about this was Resurgence was in the game. So people were abusing this at all time high. At least with Warzone 1, we only had a Verdance. So there was like minimal situations where you could use them. But who the hell let this happen? <laughs> Now we're just before the Warzone 3 launch where they would add a Doom bundle, which was actually a pretty awesome blueprint that introduced like the dual trigger. The dual trigger would fire both shells at once and resulted in a one shot down, but also like up to 15 meters. Of all the guns on this list, minus the one shot sniper explosive ammo in Warzone 2, I think this is like the one I could tolerate the most. I don't really mind this shotgun being a one shot since you had to reload between shots, so if you missed your first shot, you were probably going to die. The only like really game breaking aspect of it was the range was just super ridiculous. Don't get me wrong, it was still very annoying to die before you even realized you were being shot, so I'm definitely not saying it should have stayed in the game. I'm just saying if a shotgun's gonna one-shot, this is the way to do it. Pretty much swing for the fences if you miss, you're gonna die. If you hit your shot, great. Now we're at the launch of Warzone 3 where all the patches, nerfs, and buffs, and like new guns being implemented resulted in the Lockwood getting reverted back to the one-shot crazy range that we were just talking about. And the tier pistol, which was Modern Warfare 3's revolver, had its snake shot ammo bug to one-shot at crazy ranges too. I mean, at this point, we're kind of just beating a dead horse, but I mean, no, it was just like super stupid. I have no idea how this makes it back to the game, especially when it was just in the game like last month. Even with all that had happened leading up to this, you think they would learn a thing or two about balancing shotguns. That obviously just doesn't seem like a priority to them. The only saving grace about this was that they were both vaulted out of the game entirely only a few days after launch, so it didn't last long whatsoever. However, I do think it's worth mentioning that in Season 1 Reloaded, they did bring back the dual trigger for the Lockwood 300 and they said it was fixed, but it just wasn't. Literally the exact same gun that it was a month prior. I don't know what they were doing in the downtime, but obviously this resulted it being vaulted again, and now I think it's- I don't even think it's in the game right now, if I'm being honest. But that is the entire history of broken guns in Warzone. Please 
please let me know if I missed anything. Like I said, I kind of wanted to keep this like specifically to like bugs or exploits that like were not intended by the developers. But if I missed anything or you think there should be something on this list that wasn't, please let me know. Also, if you like this, check out my top five most hated Warzone metas. Also, be on the lookout for my live streams. I've live streamed pretty much like five to six times a week, usually in the afternoon. So if you wanted to stop by, please don't be a stranger right here on YouTube. You don't even have to go to another app. But if you liked, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Comment if you like. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you.